Hello and welcome back to the second half of our meeting with Swami Nikhilanandji of Radha Madhav Dham. Uh, Radha Madhav Dham is the bigger temple is in Texas and Jagat Guru Kripaluji Maharaji has many establishments in India also in Vrindavan and they are beautiful temples if you ever get a chance to go. Swami Nikhilanandji also has an new temple, fairly new temple, in Hillside, in, Fla in Queens, uh, called Radha Madhav Dham. Govinda, Radha Govinda Dham. Radha Govinda. That one's called Radha Govinda Dham. Yes. Radha Govinda Dham. Let me correct myself there. Swamiji is uh, quite often in that temple, and those of you who might like to meet him or visit him there, I'm sure you can get a chance to do the same. Last segment, we spoke a little bit about bhakti and devotion and meditation. I will pick up the threads from there and continue to talk to Swamiji. Swamiji, welcome once more. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Um, Swamiji, it's a tough task to be able to concentrate and to be able to focus and to continuously think of God. But in our daily lives, we have to find time to do that, especially if we know that as a soul on earth, we have our karma to do. And through karma, uh, we have to reach God some point, some life, some way, this life, another life. Would you tell us a little bit about the journey of the soul? Hinduism teaches that every soul is eternal. Vedas say, Aja mekam lohit shukla krishnam vahvi praja srijamanam sarupa ityadi. It's from Shvetashvatropanishad. It tells that there are three things that have existed forever. One is God, one is the souls, and one is Maya. Maya is the cosmic energy that the universe is made out of. So we're eternal. So it certainly is a journey, a long journey. We've been here forever and we'll be here forever. And we in fact have only one thing that we're looking for, divine happiness. And we remain in this maya, taking birth after birth, until we attain perfect divine happiness, which means until we attain God. You and I are still sitting here today because we haven't accomplished that. If we had accomplished that, it wouldn't mean we would cease to exist. It would just mean that we wouldn't need to be born in this maya anymore. We could exist in the divine dimension, in divine world, Vaikunt, Golok, Vrindavan. So the journey is really the journey home, the journey to reach God. But how we get there, or rather how long it takes us to get there, that depends on the individual soul. So many of our brothers and sisters, Tulsidas, Mirabai, they succeeded in attaining God, but we're a little slower, you could say. So depending upon a soul's level of consciousness, meaning as that soul evolving the good qualities of their mind, to what kind of things and people is this person attached to, how much desire for God have they developed? How much attachment in God have they developed? All of this determines how the soul will be reborn in the next life. Where, to what family, in what situation? I think a lot of uh, the bhakti aspect is getting detached and the power to let go. Whether it is the power to let go of anything materialistic or a human being or a negative emotion, it is the power to let go. How do you derive that strength? Because I think it's like a magnet. It continues to pull you, if not in one situation, then in another. Mm -hmm. And you find it very difficult to not be attached. सिर्फ भगवान पे कंसंट्रेट करना है मेडिटेशन के बारे में आपने पिछली दफे बताया था मेडिटेशन में मैंने सुना है कि जब आप ध्यान मुद्रा में किसी भी मुद्रा में बैठते हैं आप सोचना शुरू करिए कि पहले तो आपके आसपास ये जो भी एनवायरनमेंट है वो आपसे छूट रहा है फिर सोचिए ये धरती आपसे छूट रही है फिर ये नदी या जिसमें आप बैठे हैं वो भी छूट रहा है फिर आप अपने आप को एक शून्यता में पाते हैं और उस शून्यता में आप सिर्फ भगवान का आह्वान करके सिर्फ उनके साथ 
कुछ समय बिताते हैं क्या ये सच है देयर इज अनदर वे यू कुड डू इट लेट्स से यू आर सिटिंग एंड ट्राइंग टू थिंक ऑफ श्री कृष्ण एंड योर माइंड गोस टू योर ऑफिस राइट सो व्हाट आवर गुरुजी कृपालु जी महाराज यूज्ड टू टीच अस इज दैट इन यू कुड से ओके नाउ ब्रिंग इट बैक फ्रॉम द ऑफिस एंड ओनली थिंक ऑफ बीइंग इन द डिवाइन वर्ल्ड विद कृष्ण ही सेज और अनदर ऑप्शन इज लेट योर माइंड गो टू द ऑफिस बट यू आर इन द ऑफिस विद कृष्ण He's there in the office. He's standing beside you. Maybe he's working with you. Jo bhi hai. As long as your mind is in Krishna, you're winning. Yani you're ki winning har wakat, the battle. Yani ki har wakat Bhagwan ki upasthiti apne saath so, uh, experience karna aur us anubhuti ke saath jeete rehna. Yehi ek bhakti bhav hai. Yeh meditation ki baat me kar raha hu. Acha meditation. Yeh baat nahi kar raha hu ki ap sach much office me baithi hai. Nahi. Hmm. Ap साधना करने बैठी हैं और मन चला गया ऑफिस में जाने दो वहां ऑफिस में श्री कृष्ण अपने साथ खड़ा कीजिए सो यू सी द डिफरेंस दैट नो मैटर वेयर योर माइंड गोज इन द वर्ल्ड फुट श्री कृष्ण देयर यू आर ट्राइंग टू विजुअलाइज द फॉर्म ऑफ कृष्ण यू आर डूइंग रूप ध्यान एंड इंस्टेड योर हस्बैंड्स फॉर्म कम्स इन योर माइंड so instead of saying no i'm trying to think of krishna keep looking at your husband but see shri krishna in him So instead of fighting with the mind just bring Shri Krishna everywhere that your mind runs to because the mind runs whenever you try to meditate it goes to the people and things you're attached to so let it go there but put Shri Krishna there so you see the key in bhakti is not the the aadhar of bhakti is not vairagya vairagya apne aap ho jata hai bhakti karne se that's the key if someone thinks that no oh, i have to even begin my bhakti i have to be totally detached from the world ye galat hai ye to gyan marg ke liye hai you have to be totally detached from the world to follow gyan marg bhakti marg aisa nahi hai to meditation ke samay ki baat aapne batayi ki agar aapka man idhar udhar bhatakta hai to jahan bhi bhatakta hai usme aap krishna swarup ko sthapit kare aur aapko wahi anubhuti hogi aur aap तभी भी ध्यान अवस्था में ही रहेंगे hmm. लेकिन ध्यान तो इंसान प्रैक्टिकली uh, आधा घंटा करेगा घंटा hmm. करेगा hmm. बाकी बाकी समय में आप कैसे एक कॉन्शियसनेस को रखें अपने पास hmm. कि हर वक्त सब कॉन्शियसली एक या तो चैंटिंग हो या स्मरण हो या हर वक्त आप एक एक ऐसा कुछ अपने मन में रखें कि भगवान तभी भी आपके साथ ही हो वो अभ्यास से ही होगा पहले पहल नहीं हो सकेगा यू वी वॉन्ट बी एबल टू विल बी बिजी एंड मे बी इन एट आवर्स वंस विल थिंक ऑफ गॉड राइट दैट्स द वे आर डे गोज बाय बट द मोर वी प्रैक्टिस दैट एकांत वाली साधना वन यू सिट एंड मेडिटेट ऑन गॉड एंड डू रूप ध्यान दैट कनेक्शन टू हिम स्ट्रेंथ एंड द अटैचमेंट टू हिम गोज डीपर एंड डीपर इन योर हार्ट so that just like you may be busy and intellectually involved doing something that's taking all of your concentration yet if you're very much attached to someone you still feel a connection to that person so they're not totally gone from your mind or from your heart even when you're engaged in some activity we get to that point with god that we the attachment to him becomes so deep in our heart like a real relationship that he's there with you all the time uh if i may draw a little parallel you know all of us in our life some point somewhere with someone you know they call you fall in love and when you fall in love with that person especially if it's your first love you just do not stop thinking about that mm. person that person mm. is constantly in your mind mm-hmm. so i would say in a way that you are kind of falling in love exactly with lord krishna to the extent that you've thought of him so much you've been constantly meditating on him so much that he's your primary thought that's right that exactly. is correct and and to attain that is now no mean task it just takes practice that's all i mean like you say we have developed such attachment to other people in the world our first love for instance so through the same process of chintan you know how did you get so attached to that first person you were in love with chintan se na bar bar socha ki isme anand hai isse sukh milega mujhe 
So we do the same chintan for Shri Krishna. We believe him to be mine. We believe that he is divine happiness. If you think that enough times, you become so attached to him that it becomes like that. He never leaves your mind. And in other words, as blind as that sort of a love is, is pretty comparable to the kind of love and attachment you will have with Lord Krishna. Or for this moment, let me say any deity that somebody uh, worships, because at one point you said, doesn't matter who you worship, as long as it is different forms of the same God or the same higher spirit, and we have to elevate ourselves spiritually to get to that goal. That's right. It brings me back to my question uh, I asked some time back, letting go. How do you let go of people? Mm. How do you let go of negative emotion? How do you let go of anger? Because I think in this world today, we talk a lot about positivity and negativity. Mm -hmm. And the more negative energy you get out of your way, the more positive mm -hmm. energy is there. Positive energy equals happiness, equals an opportunity to be closer to God. It's also an outcome of doing bhakti. It's all, think of it like one bundle, all of that negativity, whether it's anger or grudges or any kind of negativity that we hold in our mind that's so hard to release, it gradually gets released the more you attach your mind to God. I mean, it seems perhaps oversimplistic, but it's the way it works. There are two fields in which you can attach your mind, God or maya. So maya includes all the people and all the things of the world. The more our mind is entangled in that, the more all of those emotions are hard to release. The more our mind is attached with God, then it's like eksa, it just gradually starts reducing. So it's not like anger would reduce, but jealousy would not reduce. And you have to make some separate supplemental effort to reduce jealousy. No, it's all, as your heart purifies, it all reduces simultaneously, gradually over the years. And obviously at the same time, your love for God is growing. Let me ask you about yourself. You are very young and sometimes- Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, many people might wonder how you have dealt with these emotions yourself. Um, coming back to that after a short break. We're talking to Swami Nikhilanandji, and it is interesting to hear his perspective on various aspects of life, basically. And my question to him just a few minutes ago was, how does he deal with a lot of what he says himself? Swamiji. For instance, anger, something like that, or anger or holding a grudge. I'm not God-realized, so my mind is not 100% purified, so I still have all the material negativities that anyone would have. But I have seen some improvement over the years as I've practiced bhakti. It's like a, a symptom of heart purification that the negativities reduce. But nonetheless, they're still there to some extent. Like, and, and like you given... said some time back that we are still all humans. That is That's why right. we are still here. So I guess it's, it's a path where even though you align yourself a certain way, does not mean 100% everything else goes away. It's an attempt. That's right. It's an attempt, so constant I, attempt. I smile sometimes when I hear people saying, you know, I, I go to the mandir. They may be talking about any mandir and they say, the, this person was very rude to me when I was at that mandir. And, you know, people who, who do devotion to God, they're supposed to be nice or it's something like this. And I say to them that, you know, if we were perfect, we wouldn't have to do devotion to God. We'd already be God-realized. Once you're God-realized, your anger, your rudeness, all of that is eliminated. So it's like going in a hospital and saying, what are you doing here with a broken leg? Why are all these sick people here? Well, we're all in need of curing. We need to cure all those negativities of the mind. And that's why we go to the mandir, so we can do devotion to God. So to go to the mandir and expect to meet all perfect people there doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. And I think uh, going to the temple and seeing the deity over and over again is, again, a visual reminder as to this is who you should be aiming for. It this helps is, us this, form right. the image when we meditate. So... And then the path is bhakti. 
right? That's right. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little more about bhakti, the types of bhakti, the nine uh, different uh, names sure. that we have given, and how to perfect it, why should we do it, mm -hmm. and where is it going to get us? Of course, you've mentioned it's going to get us closer to God, mm -hmm. but this, this constant practice, what is it going to do for an individual? Well, it, uh, in your daily life, it's going to simply, if it's practiced religiously daily, uh, it's going to improve your sense of well-being and happiness the more you develop that connection with God. And it's going to gradually reduce the negativities of the mind. The ultimate goal, the highest goal, is to meet God face to face. We call it God realization, getting the divine vision of God. Although bhakti could give liberation, as I mentioned last time, but that's considered actually a lower goal because you wouldn't meet God or experience God. And then other people may do bhakti and ask for worldly things, but why ask God for the same worldly things that we've been enjoying for unlimited lifetimes and we still find ourselves dissatisfied? Why ask Him for more of the same? We'll get what we get and we'll lose what we lose in this, in this life stuff comes and goes, why not keep our devotion selfless and just ask God for Him instead of asking for things from Him? So that's the goal. And as far as the practice, you mentioned nine types of bhakti that are the most famously uh, emphasized by scriptures and saints. But in the Bhagavatam, where Navadha bhakti is also mentioned, it's also told by Shukdevji that out of those nine forms of devotion, three are main. He says, Shrotavya kirti tavyascha smartavyo bhagavan nirinam. The three main, he says, are Shravarn, Kirtan, and Smaran. Shravarn means listening to divine philosophy about God or listening to his leelas. Kirtan means singing God's name, singing his praises. And then Smaran is actually the most important because that's the one that's done with your mind. Smaran means thinking of God, doing chintan of him. So to really uh, intensify your chintan of God, you need to do meditation. You need to do rup dhyan, meditate on his form. To do that, you just need to take some time out every day. Five minutes, 15 minutes, one hour, you know, however much time you take, that's how much benefit you'll get. And meditate on God, listen to his chanting to help you um, keep your focus and develop your feelings. And then the rest of the day, you try to remember he's with you as much as possible. And it's like exercising a muscle. The more you practice these things, the better you, you get at it and the more benefit you receive from it. I'm going to ask you a very practical question. You know, when we go to Indian temples, mm -hmm. uh, where Hinduism uh, is prevalent and based on Hinduism, a lot of Sanatan Dharma is practiced, where in one temple you won't just find one deity, you will find a lot of different deities. Now, practically, imagine somebody goes into the temple. They will stop and, you know, prostrate in front of each one of them. Mm -hmm. If it's Shiva, we're going to pour some water, some milk, do some puja there. Uh, we offer coconut, we will offer garlands, mm -hmm. flowers, anything, or even put a little bit of donation money on each one of those, in front of each one of those gods. Would it be true then that for that split minute, five minutes, that you were standing in front of each of those gods, collectively if you spent 20 minutes in the temple, collectively if you spend half an hour in the temple, basically you still worship the same god. Exactly. Yeah, it's not different gods that you're worshiping. It's your own it's, satisfaction. It's the different forms of the same god. So if you feel like connecting to God through those many different forms, that's fine. You can do that. Normally on the path of God realization, if someone is doing bhakti with the goal of attaining God, eventually someone becomes ananya to a particular form because they decide, I want to meet God in this form, and then they focus their meditation and their devotion on that form which doesn't mean they stop respecting other forms, but that becomes the focus of their uh, practice. That is so enlightening. And I'll tell you why, because I think that's a big struggle that we have. Should I worship Rama? Should I worship Shiva? Should I 
go to Mata or where should and I go? And people think if I stop worshipping this form, they'll be angry at me or something like that, which is ridiculous because not, God not is just, one. Not just angry, you feel deprived. Mm. You feel that, oh, I didn't spend enough time You've worshipping done something this wrong, God right? or yeah. the other God. Uh, and, and I hear you when you say that it ultimately draws you to one deity. And if that one deity is the one you want to finally meet, uh, probably the last day of your life, uh, when they say you cross over or you leave the bodily form. It actually and the doesn't soul... happen on the last day of your life. <laughs> okay. It happens the day you 100% surrender to God in that form. It could be tomorrow. It could be 10 years from now. But so you if could do it during your lifetime. You have to. If at the moment of death you haven't gotten that divine realization, you won't meet God. You'll be reborn and you'll continue your spiritual progress in your next life. Mm, that is intense. <laughs> um, it's a lot to talk about. I think bhakti, uh, whether you do it through going to temples, reading scriptures, you know, a lot of people are into the habit of reading the Bhagavad Gita all the time. People read the Ramayana all the time and many other Vedas and they chant certain uh, mantras all the time. Then there is a lot of bhakti attached to yagya doing yagya. What is your opinion on that? You can use any physical form of devotion to complement your chintan of Bhagwan. So some people like to do jap, some people like to do kirtan, some people like to do puja. The main thing to remember is that while doing that form of devotion, your mind should be in God. If your mind is somewhere else, the physical act of doing that ceremony or that ritual doesn't have a value of uh, real devotion. It's just a physical good action you're doing, but it doesn't purify your heart. So you could adopt any form of physical devotion. As long as your mind is in God, it's correct. For yagya, there is something that I know that at the end of the yagya, you sort of, whatever good act you did by performing that yagya, you again give it back to God. So. Good deeds belong to God. They should be offered to God. They should be offered yes. to God. That it is should be done to please God. Thank you so much. I think we have summed it up quite nicely. Good deeds should be offered to God. And to meet God should be our goal. Mm -hmm. Swamiji, thank you so much for being here. My I hope this has benefited all the viewers to some extent. And you will practice a little more of devotion to God, whoever your dear God is. Namaste.